Christ clean me up. Christ clean me up. I ain't got a stain and I'm feeling brand new. Yeah, 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 yeah. Christ clean me up. Yeah, I'm like this The gospel my friend made me righteous Now I'm walking like Christ in his likeness I can't live the same, I don't desire it Hold on, man We're gonna do it like this Yeah, I'm like this The gospel my friend made me righteous Walking like Christ in his likeness Can't live the same, I don't desire it Cause I admire him Yeah, boy, I'm like this The gospel changed me up, I got a new brain Can't live the same, I got a new brain New eyes, new Righteous all because of Christ did He conformed to his likeness, new man's priceless Yeah, he didn't leave me in the muck and mire He constantly cleaning me up, he giving new desires By his grace ain't living the same, living in shame Living unashamed, living to give glory to his name Christians repent, we had a change of mind So we literally ain't seeing the same New frame, new brain, hey, hey, yeah My faith in God brought new actions Before I chase worldly passions Righteous, a hey, brother's no longer blind. Yeah, I'm like this. The gospel, my friend, made me righteous. Walking like Christ in his likeness. Can't live the same, I don't desire it. Cause I admire him. Yeah, boy, I'm like this. The gospel changed me up, I got a new brain. Can't live the same, I got a new brain. New eyes, new heart, can't do the same. Yeah, got a new name. Yeah, boy, I'm like this. <laughs> We chop it up properly without an apology. Gotta get that theology to God, hollow because this is how we do it at All Things Theology. Yo, grace and peace, grace and peace, saints. Welcome to another episode of All Things Theology. Hey, and you know how we gotta start it off right. No, 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 no. Boy, ain't no way, boy. Boy, ain't no way, boy. We have to start it off right, because I, look, I, I I like to offer my sincere apologies, but it's an apology based on ignorance, because, hey, I am not a prophet, nor do I prophesy, not in that sense of foretelling the future, right? For Prophecy in the sense of declaring God's word, okay. But I made a statement last week. I said, this was Jamal's Bryant's worst sermon and i have to apologize because i listened to the next sermon and it surely was his worst sermon you know I'm, I'm tired of the church it's like with false teachers the neck the worst sermon is the next sermon you know and so <laughs> after you hear this you're just going to want to say turn off the light oh, oh yeah tina that was a perfect time to say Prophesy. How did I miss my cue? See, this is why I have the best chat, you know. Go on and drop prophesy in the chat because, hey, look, I am no prophet, nor do I prophesy. <laughs> yes! Randy Watson! <laughs> that boy is good. Yeah, so, yeah, that's right. You got to go deep. So I listened to this sermon by Jamal Bryant and, my goodness, the... Um, the Brit, Mr. The Bread in My Pocket pastor himself, as I've been calling these pastors, the Capital One preachers, right? Because they always want what's in your wallet, right? <laughs> they are Capital One preachers. They always want what's in your wallet. So look, we're going to start this off. You know, you guys know how I like to get into it. I like to get into it quick. I don't like to waste your time. People got things to do. I respect your time. So let's get into our first clip. But let me explain the context. So this is not actually the sermon. This part isn't the sermon. It's like, you know, they're doing some of their praise and worship and then they bust out in the offering. <laughs> it's, it's wild, man. They do like three or four offerings at this service. Um, it's I mean, and, and you know, every sermon ends with something about money. As a matter of fact, the sermon's going to be about money. Trust me, we're going to play bread in my pocket a lot today. We're going to pray. We're going to matter of fact, you, I got to give it to y'all. I got bread in my pocket. Bread in my pocket. 
We got to play a lot of J.G. Wentworth gospel, right? So let's get into our first. If you want tomatoes, you got to use tomato seeds. Amen. If you want pumpkins, you need pumpkin seeds. If you want turnips, you need turnip seeds. How many of you need finances? You need. Yeah. And if you want heresy, you need heresy seeds, right? <laughs> yeah. So he say, hey, if you want money, you got to give you got to give money, right? You, you, if you want to give get money, you got to invest. Yeah, so you got to invest in that Roth RIA account, you know, let it stack up, I, a.k.a. tithes. But don't worry, it's going to get a lot worse. Resources. Amen. They, that's why it is that we call your offering a seed. That's why we call your offering a seed. I want you to lift up uh, that hand if you're absent of it. Uh, right behind your chair, you can scan the QR. Oh, by the way, I got to explain this. This was the Easter sermon. So this makes it a lot worse because we're going to see what the Easter sermon um turns into you already know but don't spoil it for everybody come on code you can scan the qr code to take you right to our prompts of giving those of you who are worshiping with us online uh, you're able to give you're able to sow able to share uh, through zelle through text to give through givelify you're writing a check i want you to write it out uh to new birth uh if uh you just balling out of control you got cash on you we'll take that amen but we want every person to sow we'll take food steps ebt cards gift cards credit cards any, if any payment we will take it sir we will take it because we we loves the money we loves the money you know what i'm saying they 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 want what's in your wallet that's why i say these are capital one preachers because uh, we're going to recycle the community and we're going to rehab the community and we're going to build the community about what it is that you sow and how it is that you give. I want you to make God your priority on today. Make God your priority today. Uh, you ought to give God more than what you paid for your nails. Notice, notice how you... Um... You take stocks, bonds. <laughs> Notice how you make God the priority by giving a lot of money. Not, not, not repentance, you know, not faith in Jesus. You make pro God the priority of your life by giving. It's almost like he stole that line just from Mike Todd, right? Uh, he said something very similar as well. But no, you don't make God the priority of your life just by giving a lot of money. You can be a heathen well, just like Jamal Bryant and still give a lot of money. Um, money is not how you make God the priority. It's faith in Jesus. It's repentance. It's uh, believing and trusting in his word. Can I get a hallelujah in the chat? But Jamal Bryant, that doesn't sell a lot of money. That doesn't put people in the seats if you just declare simp simply what the Bible says, right? Yet most likely you aren't going to have a packed out church if you just, you know, we simply tell what the Bible says, you know, unless you just have a lot of regenerate people in that area. I get it. Um, but <laughs> AT Hale don't have a lot of that. Right. And so let's keep going. Because he took nails in his hands and nails in his feet. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You ought to give God more than what you paid for your hair. Hold on. Did y'all he, he, hear what he's saying? Hear what he's saying. Because he took nails in his hands. Hold on. Let me go back a little more. Here's his reason for why you should give more. God, your priority on today. Make God your priority today. Uh, you ought to give God more than what you paid for your nails. Because he took nails in his hands and nails in his feet. Y'all nice. False teachers can always find a reason to preach. I got bread in my pocket. Yeah, so he had nails in his hands, so you should spend more, <laughs> give more money at the, the church than you did for your nails, right? Yeah, he was nailed in his feet. So you should spend more tithe money than... You know, those Nike shoes you got on, sir. Right. Again, the, the, the fascination is always to find ways to finagle them out of their money. Right. And and, and y'all guys, you guys know me. I am pro giving. I am pro giving to a church, but you don't have to con the saints to give, Right. You don't have to con people who were regenerate to do what the Bible says. Like, that's the whole thing about this. Right. Hey, nothing. You ought to give God more than what you paid for your hair. 
Hallelujah, because he took a crown of thorns and they put it in his head. I want look, look at that manipulation. Yeah. Yeah, ladies. No salon this month. And again, I think most of that is superficial anyway, right? Uh, so I'm not encouraging them to spend their money on this anyway. But again, it's the gaslighting. Gaslight. I'm thinking that's some type of arsonist. Yeah, he's got a gaslight then to give. You to give God more than you pay for your clothes because they took his robe. And yes, yes, uh, Jamal Bryant. How much is that Gucci suit you got on? How much is that Gucci suit? And do you give as much as that Gucci suit every week? I'm not talking about your one time payment. He's going to say he gives at the end of this sermon. Right. I'm talking because you want them to give every week the set, uh, you know, a generous, healthy amount to new birth missionary Baptist church on the side of the road. Yeah, you want you want that given. They tore it apart, but aren't you glad clothes don't make you, cars don't make you, jewelry doesn't make you. What can separate me from... He says this while <laughs> dressing like this. Bro, we do not believe you. The love of God, absolutely nothing. If you make God a priority, God will always make you a priority. Please don't play God cheap. I need you to raise up your level of giving. I want you to raise up uh, your standard of giving. A low expectation is going to be met with a low demand. Uh, but I'm telling you, when you think high of God, God will eclipse your expectation. You know what is thinking high of God, not abusing the scriptures in such this manner and what we're going to see actually further. You, guys, you, this isn't even the worst, the worst of it. You're like, what? No, 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 no. You're like, ain't no way, Kate up. Boy, ain't no way, boy. Boy, ain't no way, boy. Oh, yeah, we're going to have a lot to say about how bad this sermon is. Is this going to get funky in here? Because I'm going to use a bunch of adjectives. Dr. Dollar was here on Friday. He said, people who don't give don't believe God is good for it. But how many of you all know what you give to God, God will give it right back to you. But he won't. Notice the motivation for giving. It's because you want to get some. This is called being greedy. He's literally preaching greed as a form of uh, a virtue. Give it to you the same way that you released it. I hope that you'll lift up your envelope above your head. If you're giving through your phone digitally, lift up that phone. If you're giving on your phone, I shouldn't see a picture of your kids or your dog. Look at all these people getting finagled. Man, it would make me sad, but they want everything they're, they're being told. Right, he said, I, I, I don't want to see a picture of a your, your, uh, your dog or your kids over there. My goodness, he's saying the quiet part out loud. This man wants their money. I don't want to see your kids or dog on that phone. Show me, the, show me that cash app. Show me the PayPal, the Zelle. <laughs> what, what, what are some other ways of giving? Drop it on the chat, right? Because he wants his money. He needs that money. I shouldn't see a picture of your kids or your dog. Amen. I, I should see a picture of Givelify, a text to give. Amen. A zeal. Every person is giving because every person in this room has been blessed. Every person in this room has been blessed. Amen. Those of you on the balcony, lift up that hand right where it is that you are. Ushers are on their way to you. I don't want you to feel left out. Amen. Don't worry. You don't have to move. We will finagle you right in your seat. Don't, you don't even have to come to the front. We're going to make it easy. We're going to make it easy for you for us to steal from you. You don't have to go nowhere. <laughs> this, this, yeah, like it's, he's saying the quiet part. He's yelling the quiet part out loud, right? Bless the Lord. I'll lift that hand up high right where it is that you are. Can you imagine everything connected to you is getting ready to elevate? What does that even Your mean? Your credit score, get ready to elevate. No. Amen. Your savings is getting ready to elevate. Your lifestyle is getting ready to elevate. We want everything to go up but your blood pressure. Amen. Even the heresy. The heresy is going to increase. The heresy is going up. He has no problem lying to these people. You know what I want to know is how long have these people been hearing this same lie for decades? And not one of them has thought to themselves, hold on. He's been promising me this every week. Maybe, just maybe, what he's saying is a lie, right? Because remember on Palm Sunday, he said, what, was it six or seven weeks? He actually kind of said both. Six or seven weeks, God's going to bless you with an overabundance. Oh, 
guys, it's 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 getting bad. But let's let's get into the to the sermon. And you're going to be shocked at the sermon title. <laughs> if you were a greedy pastor, go and drop in the chat. What would be the sermon? What would be your sermon title? And let's see if somebody gets close to this. On this Resurrection Sunday, I want to preach using as a subject, let me hold something. Yeah, let me. <laughs> and look at the person beside you. Tell them, can I just hold something for a minute? I just. So, let me hold something. <laughs> the sermon title is called Let Me Hold Something. You know, I, I thought of a funny joke, you know, hey, uh, you know, was it everybody hates Chris, right? <laughs> he has the uh, let me hold a dollar. Yeah, that's his him. That's him. But sir, what did you tell you? What would you, what did we tell you about touching us? Get your hands off me! So the sermon title is let me hold something. And some this has now. OK, look, we want to be careful. Right? We don't want to judge too fast, too harshly. Right. But this is supposed to be something about. um the resurrection of Christ. So, hey, let's be hopeful. Maybe it's let me hold his righteousness. <laughs> right? Let me hold on to his salvation. He freely gave, right? I, I don't know. But of course, that's not going to be it at all. No, 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 no. Boy, ain't no way, boy. Boy, ain't no way, boy. You know, every time I try to ignore Jamal Bryant, you guys send me a sermon and I just can't. Every help time I try to leave, something keeps pulling me back, me back. Well, let's continue on with these shenanigans because you're about to hear, I'm going to, look, I am, I am not a prophet. I don't know each and every one of you, but you are going to hear an interpretation on uh, the, the triumphal entry and the resurrection of Jesus that you have never heard in your life. I can assure you've never heard this kind of eisegesis. And I got a new term. I was going to. I was going to bring it out a little later, but I got a new term. This estrogenic eisegesis. What does that mean? It is uh, eisegesis. It is interpretation of scripture that's based on one's emotion rather than the scripture. That's what that's what we're going to see. Go on and pop that in the chat. <laughs> estrogenic eisegesis. That's a mouthful, but we're going to get it. Let's let's go. Philippians 2 and 8 says, and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient to death. I would dare argue this morning without fear of contradiction that nobody was more obedient to Yahweh than, than Jesus. And yet in still, I don't understand uh, Deuteronomy 28 and 12 says that uh, I will be a lender and not a borrower. That's what he says. If I am obedient unto God, I will be a lender and not a borrower. And here Jesus is most obedient of all of humankind. And yet in the last week of his life, I find three hard inquiries for a loan. See if I can help you. In the last week. Wait, so, okay. So did you guys hear that? Okay, don't let the reading of scripture lull you to sleep from him, right? Um, someone says, I learned a lot of words for this channel. Hey, you know how we do it here. Is this finna get funky in here? Cause I'm finna use a bunch of adjectives. I got you. That's why you guys come here, right? But he's saying, hey, I found three hard inquiries on the loan of Jesus. <laughs> so Jesus was getting that credit checked Apparently, but like I said, we don't want to judge too soon. What's what 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 is the hard inquiries you may be asking? Let's let's hear some of this. So I'm setting you up for this. This life, I illegally pulled Jesus's credit report. <laughs> when I pulled Jesus's credit report, I found out in the last week of his life he took out three loans. So Jesus took out three loans. Um. Jamal Bryant was able to go back in time <laughs> and find the hard inquiries of Jesus. Um, someone said, did he say humble? I heard that too, <laughs> right? What, what, what is he talking about? Well, we're about to see where this sermon is about to take a, pardon the pun, but a hard turn, 
Uh, he's found three hard inquiries. We've found a hard turn in this sermon. Well, let's, let's hear one of them. Last Sunday was Palm Sunday. And he told the disciples, go into Jerusalem and borrow a donkey. Bring the donkey for me to ride on. I'm not going to keep it. I'm going to give it back. Uh, but I need Hold on. Someone said, where did Jesus bank? <laughs> Chase bank, of course, because he chased them out with a whip, right? <laughs> Prosperity bank, right? Because Jesus has all. That's, that's what they would say, right? Prosperity bank. Oh, man. And borrow a donkey. Bring the donkey for me to ride on. I'm not going to keep it. I'm going to give it back. Uh, but I need to borrow it just so that I can get to my destination. I'm going to say this to somebody today. You can't borrow other people's drive. Hallelujah. You got to have your own drive. So one of the hard inquiries was that he um, <laughs> is that he borrowed this donkey. But I mean, I'm looking at uh, the text here and there's no indication that he borrowed it. Rather, it was given to him. Matter of fact, he didn't say, I'm going to borrow this. He says, Jesus says in Matthew 21, verse two, saying to them, go into the village in front of you and immediately you will find a donkey coat tied and a coat with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say the Lord needs them and you will send them at once. So he's trying to say, well, uh, Jesus, and you got, it's going to be crazy what he comes about kind of speculation he comes to later but he's saying hey jesus borrowed this donkey and this is a hard inquiry on his credit report guys i'm not joking no, 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 no. the fact that this guy actually came to this interpretation shows he's all about the cash now call jg wentworth 877 cash now like how do you read the text and come to the conclusion that jesus taking this donkey is a hard inquiry on his credit report. But don't worry, y'all. <laughs> like a bad sermon. Like a bad sermon. Heresy's there. It's going to get worse. I don't want you to get tired of me just yet. Lift that right hand. Do you know what I felt in the spirit today? And only those of y'all that holler back at me going to be able to receive it. What I receive in the spirit today is after reading Deuteronomy 28 and verse number 12 is that I'm a lender and not a borrower. I speak over lifted hands. I'm going to see how many y'all are crazy enough to believe it. <laughs> All of them. But let me just say this. Deuteronomy 28 is a covenantal contract between Israel. It's, you know, where you have a blessings and cursings in the land. Man, there could be so much to said about Deuteronomy 28. I mean, many, many groups <laughs> abuse it. Prosperity gospel people, um, uh, uh, Hebrew Israelites, a lot of them abuse Deuteronomy 28. But you don't want to be in a covenantal contract in a covenant of works Deuteronomy 28 because what, why? Israel failed. <laughs> That's the common theme in, of Israel. They actually could not obey. I mean, isn't that what's described about in, in the New Testament? That None of you're putting a burden on them that none of the fathers could obey as well. I mean, so you don't want this to be be in this covenantal contract like this, because guess why? All of us would fail miserably. But again, so he wants to take the blessings of Deuteronomy 28, but not not the curses, right? Not the curses. Of course not. I speak cars with no car notes. So he he. Jamal Bryan speaks cars with no car notes. See, that's what the donkey's supposed to represent, transportation. We're going to get in a lot of uh, typology in this sermon. So cars with car notes. So apparently people are just going to be giving cars to these people. <laughs> Look, man, we, we're in, in a... Uh... <laughs> with this inflation, he thinks people are just going to be giving these people cars. Oh, God, I can't hear nobody in here. I'm praying that God is going to get you out of vehicles that have a depreciating value. This is absurd because as soon as you take the car off the car lot, it's depreciating. Everybody who's bought a car, everybody who's sold cars know this, right? As soon as you take the car off the car lot, that car has depreciated. <laughs> so I have no idea what he's talking about. So is the car always supposed to stay in a new condition? Uh, I mean, state, I mean, 
You drop a french fry, that car is depreciated. You've, <laughs> those tires have lost tread, it's depreciating. So I guess this is what Jesus means when he says he's going to make all things new. <laughs> Literally, that car is going to be, it's going to be brand new every day. No exorbitant interest rates, no mechanical difficulty. You are going to escape out of bad contracts. So the car doesn't need any kind of tune up. I mean, this isn't reality, guys. We live in a sin uh fallen world guess what everything breaks down and depreciates <laughs> even cars i mean my goodness this guy is just lying to them but because they are greedy and want the money they're cheering this on one of the sad parts about this sermon is uh how much these people just cheer at nonsense utter sheer nonsense you gonna get in it and you gonna get out of it those of you that are trusting god for transportation would you give god glory for it right now if you trust in him and i pray if they truly trusted them they get out of that church because this church just leads people to hell you know what i mean jingle bells jingle bells i'm not going to hell you know what i'm saying but all right, so we got through the Palm Sunday, the vehicle, right? That's what the donkey's representing, some kind of vehicle. <laughs> yeah, where was this sermon last week? I just had to, I just had to replace my window today. <laughs> like, I could have used this. Obviously not. Hey, we got to take care of what we got to take care of. Uh, but let's go to the next point. Remember, there's three loans, three hard inquiries um, that is uh, Jesus uh, had on his credit report. Hey, guys, I'm not kidding. If you're just entering, Jamal Bryan has said there's three hard inquiries Jesus had on his credit report. Matter of fact, go on and put hard inquiry. Go on and put your credit score. In. <laughs> I just kidding. Don't do that. <laughs> do not put your credit report score in the chat, right? Uh, go on and put three hard inquiries in the chat. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the next thing he borrowed, uh, next thing he borrowed was a large upper room. He sent two of his disciples to find one big enough to celebrate the Passover. Says, I need it, here it is, that it can house and hold 12 disciples. Here's the catch, it was already fully furnished. I, I, I read a startling statistic that I wanted you to be mindful of, and the data is this, hear this, is that when rent goes up by just $100, when rent goes up by $100, it raises the probability of homelessness by 7%. God, I can't hear nobody. God, God is going to have to do something to give rent control. I so, so just in case you don't understand what it's saying, he's saying Jesus borrowed this house. I, I mean, I'm not sure he borrowed it. I mean, anyways, but this house was fully furnished that he borrowed right fully fully furnished home jesus i mean just had a meal there um again there's so much reading into this text reading into this sermon because some of you are paying at a price that is not commensurate to the value you know why some people are overpaying for the houses because they have bad credit reports that they got bad credit and guess what this is the unfortunate state of a society we live in. When people have bad credit, they have to pay cash because they don't they ain't got it like that. Hey, this is a little financial one on one. You didn't know you were going to be learning financial literacy on all things theology podcast. Right. Hey, we, we I like to have people being financial literate. But what you don't need to do is listen to what this man is telling you because he's going to have you in more debt. He's matter of fact, you're feeling sorry for yourself about the debt you're in. Um, yeah, it's like, did he borrow it or you did he use it, which was already prepared for him? Yeah, exactly. You see, Beverly, you're asking logical questions, <laughs> but you're not you're not allowed to ask these kind of questions when you're hearing sermons from Jamal Bryant. You just got to you just got to you got to agree with it and say things like this. Yes, Randy Watson. <laughs> that was good. Yeah, you just got to go along with the get along. Right. Yes, when you have bad credit, look, unfortunately, things are harder in life. Um, but anyways. But I believe for you that your gift, I'm going to take it literally, your gift is going to make a room for you. 
that every place the sole of your feet shall tread upon, God is getting ready to give it to you. He told Adam, take dominion and take authority over the earth. If you are living in an apartment, you are borrowing somebody else's room. If you are renting and you are not owning, God is going to have to shift it because his name is on the line. Home. I don't remember God being on that apartment lease. Like, look, hey, look, I, of course, I would always argue it's better to have your own to um, to buy. Right. I would argue that. But look, I understand there are situations um, that some many people can't. And they're not less righteous. They're not less pleasing to God. See, this is actually a uh, very, very uh, manipulative. Yeah, it's, it's gaslight. Gaslight. I'm thinking that's some type of arsonist. Right. And so, again, he's actually throwing shade at people who are in apartment complexes and don't have theirs. But then in the other, in the other mouth, he wants to gaslight them to give more money so hey which is it are these people poor and they need to do better are you going to keep demanding they give their money see if they're actually poor then you need to be careful you don't need to be demanding all them give the money and then now they can't now now they've even lost their apartment right because they're trying to listen to you shout out to the uh super chat hey i told y'all every time y'all give a super chat i'm gonna do it i'm, I'm gonna do it I got bread in my <laughs> yeah, but back to our regularly scheduled program. Ownership is in your future. I don't know why y'all are sitting still, but God says, I got to create generational wealth for your family. This is your last time on somebody else's lease agreement. I can't hear nobody in here. The spirit of Jabez is on you. He is about to enlarge your territory. Y'all can't shout about it. Let me see if I can talk to the people in the balcony. If God can give Puffy three houses, why can't he give me one? God Boy, ain't no way, boy. Boy, ain't no way, boy. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? I'm tired of your Go on and put P. Diddy in the chat. You know, I, bro, I, why are we using P. Diddy as an example of what the church should desire? First of all, bad timing, bro. Bad timing to use P. Diddy, bro. Because <laughs> y'all know how you got them houses, right? Y'all know how you got them houses. Um, how dare you? Look, we ain't gonna talk about it. We allegedly, allegedly, right? <laughs> is this gonna get funky in here? Cause I'm gonna use a bunch of adjectives. Why? Yeah, this is yes. Sister April called it out. So now he has a people. Now he has people out there coveting. Yeah, for P Diddy, Puff Daddy. What else they call him? We ain't gonna, hey, be nice in the chat. We ain't gonna say it. Y'all ain't about to get me kicked off and booted off YouTube. <laughs> but why? If P. Diddy got three houses, why, why can't you? Don't he sound like the man? Uh, what, what was that movie? See, some of my uh, more ethnic folks might understand this quote, right? Right? Don't say Pastor got a nice house, right? Some of y'all women folk. <laughs> right? I haven't saw that movie in years. But some of y'all know what I'm talking about. But this is literally teaching the people. To covet. Again, we don't want what PDD wants. It's so material. It's so exterior, right? It's so outwardly. Um, let me find out. Let me find let me find out Jamal Bryan was at one of them parties. No, 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 no. I ain't accusing him, but let me find out. <laughs> Kiata, you rogue. <laughs> We're not going to put that on the screen, man. We are not going to put that on the screen. Yes. What does P. Diddy have to do with any of this? As to quote an old church father, what does Rome have to do with Jerusalem? Or anybody said uh, Athens. Yes. What does Athens have to do with Jerusalem? What does that have to do with the church? What Matter of fact, what does any of this got to do with the sermon, right? Do you want to build a straw man? What is going on here? <laughs> Y'all know what I've been saying. What book of the Bible are we in? My goodness. Um, 
yeah, let's let's hear him his more and his greed. I got to be able to give it to you, press down, shaking together and running over. I see y'all got this thing twisted. I don't want you to shout like you at new birth. I want you to shout like you in your new living room. Shout like you at one of them P. Diddy parties. I want you to shout like the basement is finished. I need you to thank God like he remodeled the kitchen. You got to give God glory. No, 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 no. So don't shout like you're in new birth. Don't shout like you're, you know, worshiping God, thanking him for salvation. Shout like your house got paid off. Shout like like the room got refurbished. Shout like the basement got a new, uh, you know, <laughs> interior design. Notice again, notice what he has them shouting and excited for. The things of God? No. Again, hey, look, if you get blessed with, with physical things, amen, hallelujah. But we have to... There's categories. There's as as the, as the new kids say. There's levels to this, right? We do not prioritize materialism over spirituality, right? My goodness, and and I apologize to all those who are being uh, confronted with the uh, charismatic voice. See, I I grew up to preaching like this, so it doesn't really bother me as that much. Now, no, I find it annoying now, but I I am I am used to this. This is what I grew up to, so. Y'all are like complaining about it. I'm like, oh, this takes me back. <laughs> this takes me back to my grandpa. I, 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 you know, I can't do it as well as I used to. But hey, don't let me cut up now. Don't let your boy cut up. Um, how dare you? All right. That was point two. So what we have vehicles, houses. What's third? What, what? Let's see what is third. And I thought this would be a good time for me to tell you that he also borrowed a tomb. Oh, this one's going to have you kind of chuckling because we got into some social justice stuff. We got into some social justice madness here. Oh, yeah. So Jesus borrowed a tomb. So <laughs> how did he borrow? He was dead. I mean, he died. Right. So he didn't actually borrow the tomb. It was given to him. It, that, that doesn't even make any sense. That uh, this one actually makes the least sense out of all of them and don't get me wrong none of them have made any sense as well so but let's keep going over 2,000 years ago an innocent black man by the name of Jesus <laughs> okay so we're, and look I do not care at all about the skin tone the skin color of Jesus but you're about to see where this is about to take a turn. Now, again, what book of the Bible are we in? Negro Lations 1 and 1. Because now we're about to say, now we're about to turn all this innocent black man into a story about social justice. Right? <laughs> so Jesus, the innocent black man, borrowed a tomb. Okay? Let's see. Pastor BLM. Right? He's got the fist. Oh, yeah, they're excited. They're excited. We have enough evidence. We got enough evidence that Jesus was black. Because they took him to court, but never gave him an attorney. <laughs> no, 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 no. Boy, ain't no way, boy. Boy, ain't no what? way, boy. Bro, what are you talking about, man? Oh, I'm tired of <laughs> So he said the proof, here's the, here's the proof Jesus was a black man. Here's the proof because they took him to court. They took him to court and he didn't have no lawyer. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Turn off the lights. Can we talk for a minute? The Bible says. What? So here it is, black folk, all oh, y'all black folk, you know. See, man, they be talking about us dirty. They be making black people just seem helpless. Y'all ain't got nothing. See, and it be black people that be perpetu perpetuating these negative stereotypes, right? See, Jesus was black. You know how he was black? Yeah, this is called an anachronism, right? And even then, it's a poor anachronism because it's not even true today, right? Jesus was black because he didn't have no attorney. 
<laughs> Someone said, did no changes die recently? <laughs> I'm sorry. No, 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 no. Oh, man. You what look okay look my speculative theory is jesus was probably more dark-skinned than looked like a pantene cauc caucasoid model right that's just my theory but you know what i the only care i the only color i care about is that color being crimson that power that wonder working power in the blood of the lamb can I get a hallelujah in the chat? I do not. See, some of y'all going to be mad when Jesus come up. He more light skinned than dark skin. See, because there's a debate. There's a debate in the black community. Well, how melanated is Jesus? See, black folk will, air, will argue about any color. See, light skin is a problem for black people. Some black people, right? Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. But I do not care. I do not care about his skin tone. It is literally... I got to say it like that. Literally irrelevant. Irre I do not care. See, some of y'all going to be mad when he come back and he's more. He, oh, man, he ain't looking like the image I got in my head. Jesus is God. That's the only thing I care about. He's fully man. He died on the cross for sinners. You think you think that you you literally think that's why he he was crucified because he didn't have no lawyer being represented <laughs> my goodness man oh it's gonna get worse though y'all ain't saying nothing to me eh? we already know he was black because they arrested him and never said bail for him y'all ain't say no, 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 no. so uh, no so he didn't have a lawyer proper representation two he didn't have bail he didn't have a bail set for him. <laughs> My goodness. Well, sir, that's because they were accusing him of blasphemy. Not that he actually committed blasphemy, right? There was no bail money for blasphemy. The punishment was death. What are you talking about, sir? What is, what is this guy literally talking about? This is reading historical, uh, uh, modern day uh, social justice standpoints and reading them back in the passage as if these people would have known whatever you're having a clue talking about like literally what book of the bible are we in what is he talking about nothing you you already know that he was black because they didn't allow any visitation while it is that he was in custody i gotta <laughs> so another proof jesus is black is because he didn't have a visitor well i mean well who was at the feet of the cross? John and Mary. I, I mean, well, this makes no sense at all. What is this guy talking about? What? And you can visit black people in jail. <laughs> what is he talking about? I'm tired of the church. Black people don't get no visitation once they go to jail. What? What jail are you at, bro? My goodness. That right here. This ain't even in my sermon, but I feel like some of y'all in the balcony need to shout on this. God said, this is the season I'm getting the innocent black men out of jail. This no, 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 sir. No, 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 no. Some of them ain't innocent. Many of them ain't innocent. Kiki and Pookie them robbed 10 banks through the Metroplex. Don't free them. They, they done shot down two, three people. Don't free them. You know, I always got black people free Kiki in there. He ain't do nothing. Girl, he done robbed 10 people. Keep that brother in jail. <laughs> Keep him in jail. Yeah. Look, I, and this is not to say that there are some people in the uh, in jail who did not actually uh, commit a crime. That is true. There are people. But don't make it seem like it's the vast majority of people who, you know, the running joke is everybody's innocent in, uh, in jail. Right. Everybody. And nobody did it. Right. This is the season I am stopping the prison pipeline. I don't need you to shout if you got a perfect life, but I need you to shout for God to cover your son, for God to cover your nephew, for God to cover your brother. I pray God don't answer this, pr this prayer because you know why? If these criminals are out in the streets, that's affecting me. No, lock them up. Throw away the key. 
Because look, you ain't going to be, see and, see, and that's the problem we got because people are soft on crime. I think of states like California. And guess what? These people who, who done, done terrible things to children, y'all know what I'm talking about. I ain't trying to get booted off here. They go out, they get two months in jail, right? They go back out in the street and they're doing worse crimes. Guys, we could talk about this. We could talk about this, but Jamal Bryant is an advocate for a lot of these democratic policies, which are actually harmful to black people. I know we got to talk about it. Can we talk for a minute? The Bible says we got we could talk about it here. Right. Look, yes, a lot of these policies are bad for black people. But guess what? They keep voting Democrat. And I'm not here to say Republicanism is the solution. Don't hear that. I got a lot of problems with them, too. But this mess right here ain't helping nobody. This mess ain't helping nobody. No. And Jamal Bryan, yeah, I, I, I know he's, he's, he comes from the background of being a social justice advocate leader. Right? That's why he has, and he has no problem platforming BLM literally on his pulpit. My goodness, this guy's terrible. The gates of hell shall not prevail against him. Yeah, the gates of hell don't, but I hope that prison gate do. I hope that prison gate slams so hard that it correct your bad behavior. And you say, this ain't the life for me. I, I, that's my prayer. Anyways, we're going to keep going on. Because you think he's done? You think he's done with his black stereotypes? Again, what Bible are we in? What, what chapter of the Bible are we in? I only need right now for black men to stand up. Hallelujah. That's all I need right now is for black men to stand up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's getting ready to be a shout in this building. Sisters, clear your throat. We ain't shouting for money. We ain't shouting for... Bro, y'all been shouting for money this whole survey. What are you talking about? What are you talking about, sir? Houses. We ain't shouting for jobs. But sisters, I need you to shout for God to protect our black men. Come on, I can't hear nobody. Yes, we pray for protection. Amen. We pray. We pray for protection, but we also pray for law abiding citizens that when a man gets um, saved because he ain't getting saved in this church. Right. He ain't getting saved here. Jingle bells, jingle bells. I'm not going to hell. You know what I'm saying? Right. And so we pray when he gets saved, he actually starts to obey God. Right. And thus is a contribution to his society. He ain't out there selling weed like you said. Right. He ain't doing all that. He ain't having 10 baby mamas and things like that. You know, like all the cheering you got. Anyways, let me let me stop. Come on. I can't hear nobody driving while black shopping while black. <laughs> he gonna have all these black people scared, bro. Driving while black is not a crime and nobody's ever going to jail for it. You can shop while being black. See, he, he don't have all these people paranoid. My goodness. Anyways. Um. Living while black. Walking while black. You ought to give God a praise for a head fence of protection. All right. So he addressed the brothers in the room. Now, if you think Jamal Bryant wouldn't address the sisters and the mamas in the room, that... You, well, you would be wrong. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, if you're a black mother in this room and you got a son that's incarcerated, I need you to stand right where it is that you are. Here's the question I would ask these black mamas who got a son in jail. Where's the father? Yeah, yeah. False teachings while black. That's right. Here's the question. Yeah. Where are the fathers? Because you know the, the statistic about um, black you know, the, the, the household is without a fault. And this is true across the board. This ain't just no black thing. This is white, Hispanic. You get rid of the father. Oh, you know, like BLM is trying to do because they want to get rid of the nuclear family. The very thing Jamal Bryant is partnering with. Yeah, with that. We see that BLM fist on the cross, that blasphemous sign you got, sir. You get rid of the father. You have nearly destroyed your family. Now, God's grace is. It's sufficient. He can restore. 
right? But we're just talking about on a practical level, right? You get rid of the father, you have literally doomed, just about doomed that family. You have you have made it so hard. And guess what? I grew up without my father, so I'm speaking from experience as well. Praise God he had substitute men who stepped up, but that's generally not the case for many people, right? My goodness. Oh, man, this, this is sad on a practical level because he's... Never mind. Hallelujah. There's getting ready to be a shout in this building because God is going to get your son out ahead of schedule. He's getting ready to protect him. I can't hear nobody. And the gate, y'all are too stuck up for me. So he's going to get there. Their uh, jail, their kids out of jail um, early. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe they got to do the full sentence because they did some heinous stuff. Y'all better shout for these praying mamas that God is getting ready to bring their sons out and they're not going to be wounded. They're not going to be traumatized. They're not going to be psychologically broken. But God is going to fight for them. Yeah, yeah, this this is this uh, you know race ba race baiting, hustling, right? Per uh, perpetuating a, a stereotype that's already out there that's bad, right? Um, my goodness, don't worry. Jesus paid it all, though, right? And realize not only do I have to get up for you to be saved, but He said, if I remain dead. Oh, okay. So let me uh, back up. Yeah, like. Like, like people say, what does this have to do with the text and, and the resurrection and Easter? Um, yeah, like my wife said, I can't believe how many people are sitting there. Go ahead, girl. Prophesy. Prophesy. Out of her life. Out of her life. Right. Yeah, that's the sad part of all this, that this is such terrible teaching. So he's back on something about the resurrection. And so listen to what he says, the reason why Jesus had to raise from the dead, because this was one of the most blasphemous things I heard. Um, how dare you? And realize not only do I have to get up for you to be saved, but he said, if I remain dead, they will have to tear Deuteronomy 28 and 12 out of the Bible. Because if I stay in this tomb, I would never be able to pay Joseph back. God, I can't hear nobody. So part of why he had to get up is he said, I'm not going to go to death owing other people. I so <laughs> he says the reason why Jesus came back from the dead, part of that reason, yes, salvation. But a big reason is he Jesus wanted to pay his debt back. Remember, he said Jesus had a hard inquiry loan. He had these loans he had to pay back. So Jesus had to actually pay back his loan so he came from the dead and jesus says hey he's fixing those three issues right he pays back for um the donkey right the tomb <laughs> are we serious can y'all put what in the chat please what bro what are you talking about where bro? is that in the bible he comes back and he's i thought jesus paid it all i guess that's literal jesus paid it all <laughs> The donkeys in the stall. Yeah, he trying to pay all that debt he had back. He trying to pay it all back. What? Is, 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 this guy, is this guy serious? Let me refrain myself. Is this guy serious? This, this is a whole new hymn. I ain't heard this hymn, Jamal Bryant. This is the prosperity gospel version. Jesus paid it all. The donkeys in the stall. Y'all going and sing it with me in the, in the, uh, in the uh, tenor. We're going to be in <laughs> soprano, right? What? Are we serious? How are these people listening to this? Jesus had a physical debt and he came to pay it back. Oh, where is that? Where do we hear that? Man. Got to make sure that I'm able to pay it all back. I don't know where you are. My time is almost up, but I want to pronounce over you. You are not going to spend the rest of your life paying other people back. But God is getting better. Yeah, he's kind of right. You're not going to spend all your life paying other people back. Because you're going to be doing paying Jamal Bryant back. Yes, you're going to be paying Jamal Bryant back. Yeah, that's right. He don't want you being a debt to all these other people. Just him. To wipe the slate clean, you. You are getting ready to get a new lease on life. Yeah, someone said it. 
Jesus didn't need J.G. Wentworth. And I need cash now. Call J.G. Wentworth. 877 cash now. I guess he came from heaven bringing financial resources to pay them back with interest, I might I add. I'm so very shocked he didn't say that. Let me not give this guy any ideas. Well, if you're asking what sermon, what, what book of the Bible we're in, you're really going to ask it when you hear this. I know you don't like it, but I need you to indulge me. Right where you're seated, would you take that neighbor by the hand? I know you don't like it. I know you don't like it. Sir, what did we tell you? Get your hands off me! Quit touching us. I meet you halfway. Take that hand, but you ain't got to turn to him. Again, this. After money, do you know what is the most borrowed thing that is not given back? So what is the most borrowed? Now, I didn't know this. I did not know this. He said, what is the most borrowed thing that is not given back? Now, the humor in me would have said sermons. <laughs> Because a lot of y'all pastors be still in sermons and giving no credit. But anyways, let's get serious, right? The number one thing that is, number two thing that is stolen outside or borrowed outside of money that is not given back. Now, let's hear what he says and how this guy weaves this in the text. I have literally no idea. In America, do you know what is the most borrowed thing after money that is not returned? Tangible, tangible. Yeah. The most borrowed thing that is not returned second to money, listen to me, is jumper cables. Okay, so Kiana said books. That's if the question was what do reform folks borrow the most without giving back, <laughs> I would believe that. So jumper cables. Jumper cables. And you're so, you may be thinking to yourself, okay. What, uh, what does that have to do with anything? Well, we're about to see. You gonna get it in a minute? Your neighbor breaks down. Their battery is not working. So they come over to their neighbor's house and say, I need a jump. God, I can't hear nobody. They borrowed the jumper cables. They get their car back up and running. And Wait a second. I just thought of this. I thought the car is supposed to be working now. Why is my car broken down when he just promised early in the sermon? It's not going to be depreciating. The car is going to be no mechanical issues, right? What's Why does the car need jumper cables if what he said earlier was true? Sorry, I'm thinking too logically, right? I'm thinking too logically. The problem is they forget to bring the cables back. Because all they wanted was power for themselves. They can keep those cables, right? You have God's car, right? <laughs> oh, my goodness. And they don't care who else gets it. In order for jumper cables to work, you got to connect a positive to a negative. We are getting more exegesis on the function of jumper cables than we're ever given on the bible right <laughs> what is this guy talking about by the way if you're liking my commentary obviously not there his commentary go on and give a like subscribe right you want to see more of this let me know like yeah but hit that like button god y'all are almost there my my positive connects to your negative and i turn my engine on Everything that's in me will begin to transfer into you. Sir, the last person I'm going to be calling if I need a jump is Jamal Bryant. No, 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 no. Why would I want a negative to a negative? <laughs> Some positive. So who's the, wait a second. If there's a positive to the negative, who's the negative then? So like, I am so confused by this analogy. And don't worry, he just goes to another silliness after this right none of this actually makes sense because you're asking yourself what book of the bible are we in can you imagine <laughs> right you got your triple a and jamal bryant shows up <laughs> he gonna say boy ain't no way boy boy ain't no way boy out of my life 
out of her life. Turn off the lights. Yes, I, I'm going to be so disappointed if Jamal Bryant showed up with some jumper cables and wanted to fix my car. <laughs> Bro, what? What does this have to do with anything? I am, I mean, literally so lost. Yeah, please keep your, keep your negative energy, sir. I don't want my positive to your negative. Um, You're going to fry the whole battery. Anyways, I have this titled, What is Happening? So we're about to see <laughs> what's, I titled my clips, right? And so this is titled, What is Happening? So let's see what's about to happen. I can't hear nobody, but all the oil that's in you is getting ready to flow into them. Yeah, these some oily saints, right? These some oily saints. Can we talk for a minute? The Bible says. Or as I call them, some greasy saints. They ain't, well, take the saints off. They just some greasy people. That they are not going to suffer from a nervous breakdown. They are not going to lose their mind. They if they keep staying at your sermon, absolutely they will. Are not going to be swallowed by depression, but the glory of God is getting ready to go into your neighbor. If this has been a rough year for you, I need you to look at your neighbor and say, let me hold something. I so he, he want to get something from their neighbor. So now we see what the let me hold something finally means. It's It has something to get something from your neighbor, their oil, their battery, life, right? I mean, my goodness. I need some of your power. I need some of your strength. I need. And why do I have to go to my neighbor? Why can't I go to God who supplies? Right. What, 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 what are we doing? Like, what, what are we doing here? Some of the grace of God that's on you. And when I count to three, I want you to shout for the neighbor whose hand you're holding. Because power is getting ready to come into their life. The glory of God is getting ready to come into their life. One, two, three. Shout. Hey. Hey. Come on. And after that. Come on. I can't hear nobody. And after that. He says he can't hear anybody. Quit screaming then. Lower your tone, sir. Shall receive power. Susie says a Have good point. It? Susie makes a good point. Can someone get this man a bottle of water? <laughs> That's actually an impressive point that this man does this for an hour with literally not one drop of water. This has got to be satanic. I mean, you know, this has got to be bezel bulb, you know, apparently demons don't need water. So um, what is going on? What is going on? What in the Aquafina is going on? Well, I titled this one, I Agree. So let's see what's about to happen. Jesus died for our sins. He died for our sins. And so I'm grateful he died for my sins. Listen to me. I'm glad he died for my sins because uh, five minutes ago, I lied to you. Oh, yeah. That's why I said I agree. <laughs> He's been lying the whole sermon. By the way, shout out to Sap Peterson. Get your hands oh, wait. <laughs> Sorry, wrong one. Wrong one. Sorry. I told you all super chats will be meted by either bread in my pocket or JG Wentworth. So yeah, he said he's been lying, but let's listen to this story. He's about to uh, tell to this people. We're going to sit back, relax, going to hit that like button and we're going to listen. <laughs> Y'all are funny at Daryl sale power. <laughs> I lied to you five minutes ago. That's why he died. Cause I lied to you five minutes ago. Five minutes ago. I told you I wasn't going to have you turn to your neighbor. I was lying. We know, sir. Get your hands off me! God knows I was lying. Amen. I want you to turn to your neighbor and ask the person beside you, are they saved? Fine. Sir, I think you need to tell to your turn to yourself and say that. Are you saved? And let me answer the question for them. No. No, 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 no. Ain't no way. If they're saved, they need to get out. If they're saved. They need to get out of Jamal Bryant Lion Church. Jamal Lion Bryant Church. 
if if right, you need to get out of his church, Mister Adulterer Leader, right, Mister False Doctrine, Mister Capital One Preacher, right? Because he want what's in your wallet, right? You need if you're saved, you need to get it far away from this man. Find out if they have a church home. Find out if they've given their life over to God. If there's one here who's not saved, not given their life over to God, hallelujah. I need you to come, sir. I need you to come. Y'all ain't talking to nobody. Ain't no way y'all going to convince me the whole balcony saved. Ain't no way. I agree. <laughs> ain't no way you can convince me. Majority of this, I mean, nine, 99, one hundredths of this church is saved, right? Ain't, ain't no way you can convince me of that. Yeah, there's a bunch of heathens in a church. In a building that has church on the outside, right? Shout out to Brenda Massey for the super chat. If you want to see that song some more. <laughs> but yeah, so yes, there's no way you can convince me the 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 top row, you know, say all saved. Because I don't think the bottom row is all saved. Hey, you going to convince me of that. Ain't no way you're going to convince me all of them have a relationship with God. He said, ain't no way. I said, yes, sir. I said, yes, sir. Boy, ain't no way, boy. Boy, ain't no way, boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you remember how in the beginning of the service he was saying how um, he was, hey, he wanted he wanted PayPal. He write Cash App. Listen to this. He gets even more greedier. Uh, but we want to make sure that I'm in. By the way, this is our last clip and they will be taking questions. So we will go into that after this. Uh, so, yeah, stick around. History uh, is exemplary of the five-star quality God uh, that we serve. I, I also want to stretch you. God gave me something the other day, walking around my house. Uh, those of you at home that got jars of coins. Raise so um, he said God gave him this. Now, I know about jars of clay in the scripture, <laughs> but not jars of, jars of coin. Watch how this man finagles here. I need cash now. At home, they got jars of coins. Raise your hand. You got jars of coins. Amen. Bring that to church the third <laughs> Sunday. You ain't no so he's trying to get 5,000, 1,000, right? He, he sounds like an auctioneer, right? So, remember, so this is the offering time. The second, third offering, by the way. Um, there's, there's been numerous offerings in this sermon. So he said, hey, look, if you got jars of coin... <laughs> bring that to church <laughs> this man is he is a penny pitcher penny pincher right he this is why i think the scripture is speaking about the woman with the coin i know many people have taken that as a positive message about see you just got to give your all no i actually don't think that's the point of that sermon at all we've looked at that passage i believe what jesus is saying false religion will take advantage of the most unfortunate poor person alive and Jamal Bryant is a living model of what the Pharisees were doing to poor people in that day. I mean, maybe one day I'll have to go over that again. I know I did a uh, teaching on that on this uh, channel before, but I believe we, many have missed the point of that passage. It's not about giving all, even if it's your last. No, Jesus is actually expressing disappointment. You can see that from the passage above about how these people will go into women's weak women's house and steal from them. He he wants the he wants your jars of coins. My goodness. My goodness, this guy wants the jars of coins. You know how greedy you gotta be to want somebody coins? Bro, when's the last time you saw a quarter and got excited? I mean, this with inflation, bro. With inflation, bro, you see a you want somebody's quarters, man. No arcades open no more. Amen. Uh, ain't no phone booths nowhere. Amen. Uh, so ask that you bring those jars of coins. He's saying you don't even need those coins. You can't use it for anything. My goodness, man. On the third, uh, the third Sunday of April, but I want you to uh, join us uh, in that level of uh, giving. I'm believing God for two hundred and fifty thousand dollars above our tithes and offerings. So he, hey, no, notice they have a tithes and offerings, so that you got to give twice there, and he wants to go two hundred fifty thousand dollars above that. So that means, guess what? 
I know you usually give your last every week. <laughs> I know you just live living paycheck to paycheck, but you need to give more. You need to sell that lamp. You got you got two lamps. Sell one of them. You only need half that bed. Sell half the bed, right? You don't need two packs of butter. Sell one. Like this is how the level of manipulation these guys will go through. Gaslight. Or I'm thinking that's some type of arsonist. Is this going to get funky in here? Because I'm going to use a bunch of adjectives. Yeah, he need that two hundred fifty thousand dollars for for signs. Not signs and wonders, literal signs. He he literally, literally wants sign, new signs. And so they have to raise two hundred fifty thousand dollars to please old Jamal Bryant. My goodness. See, see, false religion will always burden people with extra commands. They will always placing burdens on the people. I mean, every week he's placing a burden on people. People don't have the money yet. He's going to he's going to man. This is OJ offering. He's going to squeeze it out of you. <laughs> he's going to squeeze that 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 pope. Uh, so that we'll be able to do something substantial and significant uh, for this to take place. In God, there is absolutely no failure. Amen. Would you clap your hands for every person who gave today? For every person who sold on today? Bless the Lord. My goodness. My goodness, guys. This, this is bad. It, it is sad when people get manipulated like this. And, you know, hey, but we're the Pharisees, right? We are the Pharisees. Hope you enjoyed that video today, right? Um, yeah, feel free to ask questions. Maybe you got some questions about the sermon. I say sermon. Um, that's not really a sermon. Lawrence says, hold on, let me move this here. He says, did he ever, hold on, take it down. He says, did he ever share what ministry work this money is going towards? He just, hold on. Or is he just uh, promising uh, <laughs> maintenance-free cars and houses? I mean, it's supposed to go to their their signs, the new signs they want to get, right? So they want to get new signs in the church. And so 250 k for some signs is wild, bro. <laughs> Look, I'm not saying you can't get new signs for your church, but come on, man. You got to be a little more fiscally responsible for than that, right? I mean, just terrible, terrible, terrible um things that are going on um yeah five thousand dollar bird seed <laughs> yeah ask questions away ask questions away guys we'll do a little quick uh short q a and we'll um <laughs> hold on i gotta do it one more time i gotta do it one more time in, in honor of that that sermon we had there i got bread in my <laughs> yeah man it's crazy out here there's a lot a false teaching yeah get your hands out of my jar it's, it's he said it's my money and i want it now right he says do you know how many people uh they could actually help with 250k i mean their own people i mean i'm sure you have people in there who are struggling right my my goodness uh he says why don't why don't he get why don't he got businesses to pay for this stuff? You, I mean, you guys are asking logical questions. The problem is we're expecting a logical answer back from Jamal Bryant, right? I think that's part of the, uh, uh, he said, yeah, that money in for signs. No way. Who is the guy saying gaslight? I thought that was ours. That's, um, why did I just forget his name? Uh, he, he recently died. He was a, um, politician like in the detroit area um wh why did i forget his name it'll come back to me somebody will say it somebody will say it thank you guys um thank you for this super chat hold on hold on i got i gotta show you love man and i need cash now call jg wentworth yes 877 cash now yes uh putting his hand in front of his mouth while blushing yeah yeah Man, it's it's sad that man they uh, do this. Yeah, that's right, Susie Q. Shout out to Susie, the best moderator on these streets. Yes, Eric Mays. Eric Mays is the gaslighting guy. I <laughs> uh, said, so, do you know Kate Up makes music too? Find it here at kateuptrue.com. Yeah, go to kateuptrue.com. Lord willing, man, I'll be able to to uh, put some more content on the website. 
I definitely want to put like articles and um, hopefully next week I will be done with the Catherine Crick, um, uh, my my keynote presentation I want to present. It's it's a lot of material, guys, because and I'm not even putting I'm not putting everything in it. I mean. And so, yeah, go to kateuptrue.com, get more content that way. And so, yes, I appreciate it for that CZQ. Yeah, working on that Catherine Crick thing, man. That's guys, this book is so bad. I I am convinced uh, Catherine Crick is a cult leader, and I will even go further than that. I think she's a witch. I remember first hearing that from uh, Caldwell Apologetics, and I thought I was like, oh man, that may be too harsh. But I read this book, and I was like, I think he's on to something. Prophesy. 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 Yes, very very bad. Um, faithful followers, first time in your life. Well, welcome. Welcome here. I hope you're enjoying it, sir. Or man, I don't know. Don't want to assume, right? <laughs> Welcome. Glad you are here. Uh, let's see. Say he says, I used to see Jamal B riding down the street in a green B, green Bentley stunting on the community. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. That doesn't surprise me. Nor shock me. Mary M.M. says, hope you like this video, everyone. Yes, go on and hit those like button, man. It helps with the algorithms, people. Maybe someone from Jamal Bryant, due to your like, give your tithe with a like. <laughs> At least my tithe is free, right? <laughs> give a like to your boy and maybe someone in the algorithm will, will see it. Let's go. That's our hope. That's, that is my hope that someone will see this and they see how ridiculous th this stuff is, how biblically inaccurate it is. Um, let, let us see, but Jamal Bryant and William Murphy scheming all over Atlanta. Yeah. AT Hale, right? AT Hale, go on and drop AT Hale in the chat. Cause man, man, I got to get out to Atlanta. If I do go to Atlanta, my goal is to open air preach, preach the true gospel at the corner of William Murphy's church. That's what I would love to do. Right. Um, I would love to do that. I ain't trying to go in there for <laughs> to hear some edifying word. Yeah, Atlanta must be stopped, right? Oh, uh, yeah. Can we see if she floats? She might. Light as a feather, swift as a board, right? I I, I don't know. She might. <laughs> Catherine Crick might, right? Hey, I ain't trying to find out. I'm not trying to be in a hallway or a room by myself with Catherine Crick. I'll just say that. I am terrified of that woman. <laughs> Are there any churches in Atlanta that you recommend? Brenda Massey says, absolutely. Um, in the Atlanta area, there are a few. I think I think of uh, I would hit up uh, either Caldwell Apologetics, Dear Woke Christian or S Standard of True Podcast. That's April Chapman. They are they are all in the Atlanta area. And I know they have biblical solid churches in the area. And so, yeah, there absolutely are. God has his remnant, right? God has his remnant. He's still building his churches. And that means there will be faithful churches that have not compromised nor bowed the knee to Baal that you can still find. It may be hard. It may be difficult. But so is finding a good wife. Can I get an amen in the chat? <laughs> but you still were thirsty in the DMs. Hey, you better be working hard to find, find a church just like you was working hard to find a spouse. Right. And so that's why I say put this keep that same energy with finding a good church. Right. Um any word of Daniel Adams recent? Uh, any word of Daniel Adams recently? Man, I haven't, I haven't been watching much of him, and so um, <clears throat> no news report of yet. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Did Mike Todd say April open, open air preaching was a biblical? Oh yeah, he did say it was a uh, hate like hateful, right? I mean, Jesus opened air preach, so I mean, so much for that. Let's see. Uh, hot thing cooking. <laughs> that sounds like a pretty cool uh, channel name. Hopefully you make content about you cooking hot food. He says, enjoying the laughter while learning, bro. Keep the content coming. So very, very appreciative of that. Um Always appreciate, man, when people say, hey, look, man, because of your channel, I found a church because of you, man. Um, I, I learned something. Yeah, that's always encouraging to me. Um, Damon Hendricks, man. Good to see you. 
God bless you, man. Like he, emailed, uh, hopefully you don't mind. I, I don't think it's an embarrassing thing to ask if I share this. He asked for a church and I gave him some recommendations and, um, yeah, man, that's what I love. I love to see people in biblical solid churches, man. That's, that's th my channel. Like if I die on any hill, right, it's the gospel and finding people solid biblical churches. So yes, um, uh, let's see, let's see. Daniel Adams building his own headquarters. Oh my goodness. Oof. Please, Lord, no. Destroy that building. Um it says, because of you, there is hope. Because of Christ, there's hope ultimately, right? Because one of the things I don't want to do in this, you know, this video is point people to me. Hey, how likable I am. Now you may think I'm funny and great, what whatever, right? Um, but ultimately, man. I'm going to fail you. I'm going to frustrate you. I will sin against you, right? Uh, but that's why we have to point people to Christ because men fail. Men fail and I will fail you at some point. Um, why you pray that I don't, but let's be real. Like I, I, I understand man's nature. See this, I actually get frustrated when people leave the church, somebody, somebody sinned against them, depending on the sin, right? They, but some people, oh, they gossiped at the church. So I left. What about your sin? Right? I tell people, once you find a good church, make it hard to leave. Make it hard to leave. I think people, pe many people leave good biblical churches. I'm not talking about the Joel Osteen, the, the garbage ones, guys. When I say church in this context, I'm talking about biblical churches. Some people leave those too easily. Man, I've been at my church uh, over 10 years. Guess what? I've been sinned against. It's been hard, but we worked through those issues, right? Anyways. When's your next collaboration with Rick Caldwell? Man, I got to have Rick on soon. I, we, we talked about doing something soon. I want to do something with Rick Caldwell responding to um, some like atheist claims, some uh, a former pastor. So we want to do something apologetically driven. And I would love to have Brother Rick Caldwell. I know CZQ is going to drop Rick Caldwell's channel in the chat as I'm speaking. <laughs> and me and Rick Caldwell will do something soon, man. I love I love his content. If you're not subscribed to Rick Caldwell, he is probably my favorite content creator. Um, and so I always love to hear Brother Rick. He Brother, Brother Rick goes live. I love to uh, hear him hear him talk he's very biblically minded and rooted and so bob to bob says don't ever cut the mustache but what if i grow a beard what if i grow a beard will, will, will you still show love that's that's a real question see if i change don't change up <laughs> oh uh for those who have not the physical building to fellowship we appreciate you yeah well i hope this is a supplement to what you're hearing at the local church and so yeah, I, I definitely appreciate those uh, watching and tuning in. Do one on the Doctrines of Grace with Rick. Yeah, we'll have to do something. We will have to do something. Um, Angela says, he ain't getting my jars of coins. She said, no, 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 no. <laughs> not my coins. Hey, I, you know how hard you have to work for those coins? Man, not my coins. Are you willing to view people's subscribers, church sermons for your thoughts or insights? Yeah, I'm willing. I'm willing. Obviously, I, I, I'm fighting the struggle for time. So, but yeah, I'm more than willing. Uh, I think I have done that a few times. Uh, mm, let's see. Let's see. Head down bail money. So, Chris, will you do any more apologetic debates? I enjoyed watching them. Yeah, I'm always willing to do discussions, conversations, debates. Uh,. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I, I, I like to engage, man. That's what helped grow me apologetically is having debates, discussions with people who don't um, think like me or, you know, are heretical. That's that's how I've remembered a lot of Bible verses is debate. Funny enough, my mind works weird. My mind works strange. <laughs> and so my wife always tells me, you're, you're a strange fellow. I know. I know I am. I admit it. I confess my strangeness. Sissy says, I have never noticed your mustache like the episode of The Office. So I've never, confession, I've never watched The Office. <laughs> that did appeal to me. I grew up on other shows, right? Uh, Martin, Jamie Foxx show. I'm not saying these are wholesome shows. I'm just telling you what I grew up on. <laughs> <And so. laughs> but yeah, hey, some people like the mustache. Some people don't, right? It is what it is. 
Um, let's see, let's see. Yeah, yeah, subscribe to Q, Kiana uh, Shaw's YouTube channel. She is another sister uh, dropping good content. Uh, we need more sound ladies doing doing um, more apologetic work, providing a voice for ladies as well. And so, so yeah. Stacy says, Caleb, I really enjoy your content and your sound effects are super funny. My baby loves the one you created with Tim Ross. Well, so in, in all fairness, I didn't create that. But I use it. Right. And so I'm glad, hey, the kids watch this show. That's one of my biggest like, man, when kids tell me they watch the show, there's this young girl at church. She's like, hey, Caleb, I watched the show the other day. It's like, OK, what you think? And she's like, wow, I can't believe people believe that. She's like nine, 10 years old. It's, it is great to see that even young kids can learn. Right. And so don't be afraid to go deep in knowledge. Right. And enhance one's vocabulary. Right. You know, this is going to get funky in here because I'm going to use a bunch of adjectives. We got to do it. We got to do it. Um. What about secret societies and esoteric religions? So let me just say this. I understand my limitation. So sometimes people send me a video and I'm like, look, I may not be the best person to respond to this. Right. And so, hey, look, I don't I don't hopefully I'm never given the impression that I know everything. I know the channel is all things theology, but be, be fair with the all. Right. And so, hey, I understand my limitations. Sometimes people send me stuff and I'm like, hey. Maybe this person would be better to address this. This is not my my wheelhouse, right? And so I try to understand my limitations. Let's see, let's see. <laughs> she said, I would love to see your video, but it's in Spanish. Hey, muy piquito espanol, okay? Muy piquito. I tell people that they're like, oh, they start talking 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 regular Spanish. I say, hell no, muy piquito, muy piquito. <laughs> I only know a little Spanish, so my Spanish very limited. I love Spanish culture. Wish I knew more Spanish, but it is what it is, right? Um, let's see, let's see. So yes, glad the kids are watching. Uh, Angie says, love your videos, sir. JP, man, what is going on, man? <laughs> uh yeah, the always is always Calvinistic. Hey, I like that joke. I like it, sir, and I'm with it. <laughs> I appreciate everybody who watches the videos and things like that. Um, let's see. I see Shara has a question. She says, what are your thoughts on Andrew Womack and Karis Bible College? So I don't know. So I want to be careful with my um, statements here because I don't know a lot about Andrew Womack. And so, but I do know that he is surrounded with um, a lot of word of faith NAR people. So if that demonstrates his leanings, then obviously I would not um, support that. Um, Kiris Bible College, I don't know much about that college, but if it's same thing, then obviously I wouldn't, wouldn't support it. So um, I know I didn't have a lot of content to say about that, but. If I don't know an answer, hey, I try to be vague or general and not specific. So, uh, yeah. Let's see. JP says he'll teach me Spanish. Hey, I'll let you teach me that. <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. But serious. Uh, it says, I feel like I am moving in error. This channel is where one would speak up and correct me that I appreciate. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah. 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 Lord willing, right? And but also recognizing that I'm only one person. This is why I I always recommend being in a local church, people in your vicinity that can actually walk through you with issues, because I'm so disconnected, right? This this is just this uh, relationship is is um that that we have with one another is difficult in one sense because I I literally don't know many of you. And the best person to walk with you through your issues are those with you in a local church. Like, um, that's why I tell people, I get emails all the time. Hey, this is what I'm going through. And I generally ask them, are they in a local church? Not that I'm willing to assist you, but it's kind of hard if I don't know you. Right. And so um, I can give you the Bible, what the Bible says on the issues one is going through. But again, the best people to help you with your um practical issues are those in the local church your elders things like that and so so yeah 
Oh, Miss Williams says, wanted to know if you will cover the master's voice here on YouTube. She's worth covering. Yeah, so I've covered her once before. I do plan on covering her during the election, especially if Biden loses, <laughs> which I am. I think he will. But um, because she made a prophecy, she was referring to the last election. But many people are trying to say, no, what she meant was this. Right. So you got to reinterpret the prophecy. Right. When the prophecy fails, you got to reinterpret it. But I do want to deal with her content. But if hey, you find something worth uh, talking about, um, then, hey, definitely send me my email, allthingstheology at Gmail, and then we can get into it as well. Uh, Miss Vanessa, well, maybe I can get it translated. If you could put the translation on the screen and send it to me, maybe we can still deal with it. So that's another, um, you know, thing we can do. Long for True Channel has a good expo expose of Andrew Womack teaching identical to Gnosticism. Well, there you go. If that is what it is, right? Um, yeah, so, man, I appreciate you guys for sticking around so long. It's always good to chat with you guys. and Man, we got to deal with the foolishness, but biblically correct it. And a lot of it is just showing it because you guys are express a lot of good discernment and so half the half of it is just showing you guys the ridiculousness and you guys see it for what it is right unfortunately there are many people with blinders there are many people with um that are that are ignorant of these things right and hopefully hearing them see it played on us responding to it will will show uh like wow man wow what that that is that does sound foolish that does sound crazy right and so hopefully that is hopefully they see right they come across the algorithms right uh and they see channels like this exposing jamal bryant that they hey awaken that the lord would use channels like this and um yeah that will that will, that, will, that is always great and so um yeah, there's a lot of people in this channel in atlanta maybe we'll do the all things theology meet up in Atlanta. <laughs> so it's always a blessing, man. You know, I've met Kiana Shaw before. Uh, I'm trying to think who else I've seen. Um, so yeah, I've seen some channel, some people who's come to come to this channel, subscribe to this channel, also make content, and um, you know, it's always a blessing to 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 see people that have been commenting on the comment section, chatting along, right? And so yeah. Um, Zuri Kai, hope I pronounce your name. Glad, glad you are here. She says, Hey, K Dub, love the content. Quick question I've come across a channel called Sinetter. Yes, yes, I've heard of them, of him, where the conscious community does debates, but the Christians that have debated weren't the best. Uh, yeah, uh, so I would look into a gentleman who's been on there named Vocab because they generally mistreat him because of that, right? <laughs> um, yeah, you have to be careful because sometimes there are some Christians who are not skilled in debate or most knowledgeable in debate who go on and don't look the best. A, a great example to, of that is um, a conversation me and Rick Caldwell covered on the Jubilee podcast where it was um, atheists versus Christians. And I thought the Christian side was terrible. Uh, don't get me wrong. The atheist side wasn't good. But yes. Um, yeah. Uh, so. I again. I don't, I don't, I've delved into a lot of like black Hebrews, like thought theology, engaging them. I have to, I'll have to get back into doing some things like that. Um, I think it'll be beneficial. Um, Mary, we're blessed to have your channel. Great for sharing. Thank you. Thank you. Classy and covered. Have you ever discussed covered Tiffany Montgomery covered by God? Her messages have gone viral a few times. So I have not, you could send that to my email, all things theology at Gmail. Um, I would love to do something like that. Ken ID, looking for a good church, one rule of thumb, avoid any mega church that isn't reformed and does not do expository preaching. Well, um, maybe you could email me. Maybe you could email all things theology at Gmail. Let me put that in the chat. Uh, so people can have that. And by the way, it's always in the description at the bottom of the video. So, um, just in case. Bro, James McCoy says, would it be okay to shoot you an email? Absolutely. Andy says she would love to go to a meetup. Absolutely. That's right. That's right. Um, 
Oh, Bop to Bops, you're in ATL? I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Yeah, even more reason to come to, he said, unfortunately. <laughs> even more reason to go to ATL. Right. Christine has, what do you do when a friend is supporting heretics and you try to talk to them and they continue to not listen, but then attack you and blast you online? First and foremost, I would say honor Christ. Right. Don't re don't um, don't return evil for evil. So keep your character and wits about you. Pray for them. But as long as they give you an opportunity, continue to share truth with them, challenge them in a loving way. But, you know, generally I, what I find is they cut off the relationship, right? Not you. Um, but as long as they give me an ear, guess what? I'm going to keep talking. So, yeah. Hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully that was helpful. But, man, if you guys um, have any more questions, see, a lot of people join the Discord group. You can join the Discord group by clicking join, becoming a member for, look, $1.99, less than Netflix and more beneficial, right? And so you can join the Netflix. We can continue this conversation. You can continue by emailing me or dropping a comment below. But yeah, going to have to go. Going to have to go. But I appreciate this. It was a good video discussion. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hey, till the next time, y'all, grace and peace.